My name is Unachi Sunday. Yeah, but on radio they call me Fresh Boy. Fresh Boy. I can't say you're fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are fresh. Yeah. <laughs> you are fresh now. See, see the montage. I'm telling you. Don't worry. It's more, there's no money to go and shave. Uh, no, it's no, not no, my no. fault. Ah, it was fault. Don't worry. After we finish, you will give me money so I can go and shave. <laughs> experience <laughs> you know when you first um reached out to me and you said oh you want to talk about your secondary school experience there's this nostalgic feeling i had and i was like what came to my way to how can someone want to do a podcast that is about secondary school like some of us left secondary school many many years ago you know but it, it's fun um the secondary school i attended uh, so I, I went to two secondary schools, coincidentally. Yes, yeah, so I have two experience. <laughs> One was a full um, day school. So I had my GSS1 to GSS3. And then uh, SS1 I left because um, the reason why I left was the sciences in that place was really not as I expected because I want to be in the science class. You know, so I thought, okay, the next thing to do was to move to the neighboring city where I can get the kind of education that I wanted, particularly because of what I want to pursue in life. So I now moved to the other school, which is maybe 20 minutes away from my oh. hometown. Uh, it, it's fun. I have stories, though. I don't know if I should say all of them. Please, 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 please. You know, so when I got in, coincidentally again, when I was getting in, the, they now switched from a full boarding school to boarding and day. So I stayed in the hostel, mm. you know. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hostel life is like another life entirely. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so that's where the whole story started. Uh, we have to make food for ourselves. We have to get stuff for ourselves. And um, another problem we had then was water. So we wake up very early in the morning to go look for how to get water. But I saw Shege, maybe Shege Banza, because one of the seniors um, then, I will get water as early as I can, keep close to my bunk, you know. Before I wake up, he has carried my water. I mean, I was a senior student in SS1. Before I will say, Jack, he has carried my water. And if I do anyhow, I'll suffer. They will punish me, you know. So it, it, it was a mix of. Uh, joy, excitement, and then pain when you haven't really attained the senior, senior level, as it were, you know. Uh, today, when I see him, he's a practicing lawyer right now. When I see him, we laugh over what he did to me in secondary school, you know. But it was fun. Uh, yeah, my secondary school was really filled with fun because uh, I think I used to be a bookworm. Um, I, I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, a doctor and maybe a, a communication expert along that line because at an early age I started modeling how I present on radio and all of that so I love listening to radio so I was looking at maybe when I become a medical doctor I could use the media platform to educate people on health issues and all of that but uh, I don't think that's the part that God wanted me to go so at the end of the day we're here and um, too many stories to tell, but as you ask the questions, I probably will, uh, will delve more. But one thing I will never forget in my secondary school days was the fact that there was a time I, I ran out of food. I think it happened twice. I ran out of food. And where my aunt lives in the city I was, from my school, you can trek like 45 minutes. I didn't have one kobo. I had to trek. When I trek, I got there, she gave me some food items. She didn't give me money to enter or cut her back. I trekked back to school. I couldn't even cook what she gave me. I slept. So I had a lot of, you know, sad stories, sad moments, and uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, I think it shaped me. The whole thing that happened really shaped me because of my upbringing. Um, I spent more time studying, and in my class, at different times, there was no first position. I mean, between the boys and the girls, everybody was like on fire. And the secondary school I attended, uh, when, we got, when we were in SS2, we were over 250. In class? 
No, different class. Like the, the number of students in SS2 okay. because we have A, B, C, D down C, to F, yes, yeah. you know. But when we got to SS3, we were less than 50. A lot of people ran to um, what they call, um, is yeah. it? Miracle centers. Miracle centers, you know. And those that ran were running because they feel that the school has an history Free. where people don't pass their wire or neck or whatever it is. So for those of us that stay, means that we're ready to face the battle. And we started preparing ahead of it. I don't have the resources to be able to start going to a miracle center because I will suffer. I don't have it. So I had to stay put. It's either you read or you fail. Do you understand? And I had to take the bull by the horn. I, I, we wrote our mock, you know. I will tell you the story before the mock as well. We wrote our mock. I, came, I got lots of prizes from the school. After that, we wrote the main exams. I didn't have any F9. Wow. I, I had B, I had um, C4, I had C5, you know. That was when my brain was very hot. But now I don't know if I can <laughs> attempt that. And they said I have a story to tell during um, while schools were on break and then we're supposed to, um, my food finished again. I said I have a story. The only thing I had was my friend and I, who is now a doctor, um, we had only rice and cornflakes. We had nothing to cook the rice. In fact, there was no kerosene in our stoves. Luckily, someone has um, this electric um, cooker or something. We say, please, we want to eat. We don't have food. We can't go anywhere. Have you ever eaten rice with cornflakes? <laughs> I did it. How? Yes, we cooked the rice first and then mixed the cornflakes. So the cornflakes was like this soup. <laughs> it sounds awkward, but that's, we survived it. You know, uh, jumping of fences, because sometimes the, 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 uh, they don't, uh, if you must go out, you have to go through the main gate. And there is a timeline for which you can go outside if you are a boarding student. If you, if you exceeded that time and you didn't come back as well, you have to find a way. And if they catch you jumping the fence, because luckily our hostel is just by the fence. The boys' hostel is just by the fence. You know, some of us will have to go out. If you must survive, if you have people in the city, you have to go out. And when you are coming back, you just to whistle to your guys so that they will know if any of the matrons or yes, senior yes, prefects yes. are around. So, yeah, it was a mix of a whole lot. So if I want to talk about these stories... I have to sit down, think what happened part time, and all of that. Yeah, so it, it's <laughs> it's it's amazing, and and I don't know how the second. I feel sometimes when you you call me, I feel like maybe one of these days I should go back in memory and go back to become a student again. How would it feel like if I go back to become a secondary school student? How will I act? Will I act differently? Will I? Will, do you understand? I I. Maybe we should give it a try. Okay, that's 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 <laughs> that's the next episode. For, and the time is coming. We give it a try. So go go there, make things yes. happen. Yes, and then wear school uniform. Ah, yes, you have to wear school uniform. I want to look like a passenger. Well, you have to wear school uniform. Okay. You have to go to the assembly ground. Okay. You have to do every carry single school bag. carry school bag. Okay, that's true. That's true. You know, I think, I think that idea is nice. Yes. So I think we should incorporate it, and, and and also something I I think I really loved while I was in secondary school that God helped me to do was there is this thing we're doing. I was in the FCS. I, I don't know how potent that is now. I, I was in the FCS, and every morning the school I went to encouraged it. Every morning. Um, you will see both junior and senior. A junior student can go to an SS3, on the, I think on the Thursday morning or something, and hold a devotion with them in the class and preach. preach. A senior student can go to an SS1, um, GSS1, and a GSS1 student that is sound enough and bold can go to an SS3 and preach, and preach in their class. I don't know if that happens now, but yeah. for me, it was something amazing. It, wow. It's amazing. Wow. And it helped shape a lot of us mm. back then. Shape, 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 <laughs> shape. So the, the next thing is that, so that means in the secondary school, there was no crushes on these ladies. No, so. there was. Ah, we want to hear that part. That part, we want to hear that part. So, we want to hear so that the, part. There was. You know, funny enough, um, when I came into that city, like I said, 
for my senior secondary education, um, the class I went to, the first thing I did was to try to study the people. Because I didn't come in the first time. I came the second time. time. So I needed to study who is the bright student because I really want to align with yeah. the intelligent people. Yes. So if a friend of mine that I shared seat with at that time, um, who later became the head boy, was like this, 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 this. He, he pointed them. I said, okay, good. So I need to find one. And amongst the people he pointed, two were girls. Mm. So <laughs> so I don't know why you were fooling. You know, so I the first thing I did when he pointed one, I, I don't know whether it is they call it I, well it's, it's childish thing. Ah. <laughs> I think the way I saw that girl, I kinda liked her mm. because she was sort of I don't know what I liked, but I think her intelligence was something that really drive me. So what I did, because I used to be very scared to talk to ladies. So what I did first was to see, I asked her, please can you borrow me your notes? Um, so I can write. I think it was biology something because I missed a lot of classes with fire issue. And the kind of attitude she gave to me. I was like, okay, cool, no wala. She didn't give me. So we now after a class or something, we're supposed to do tests, take a test. When we wrote the test, I was among the highest. So when the the teacher came in and say, Who is this person? Because I'm new, he now called my name, talked about what I wrote. She too developed interest. Mm. She wants to know who this guy is. Yes. Do you understand? That was how we became friends. I, I kind of liked her, you know. But of course, um, she was a friend that I deeply had crush on. But because of the belief system, we, we can't go beyond just okay. being friends. Post-secondary school, in fact, I thought I was going to marry her. But it was later one the the other girl that I said there were two. Yeah. That now she to be, that one became the head girl. This one became the assistant. Mm. Right? Was telling me, see, you are giving in too much. You will get heartbreak. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't hearing. I was blinded. But the truth is, as a friend of mine, one of the things that we encouraged each other to do was to study. So we could go for prep in the evenings, and then we study. There was a night, I think, before we wrote our Neko, I didn't do what they call um, choco or chocoli or something, <laughs> but there's a different name for it. So we were preparing for the exam, and then we got a hint that that math is going to be difficult. She came to me. She said, please, I know you study a lot. But do you mind? I think the, the question leaked. She now said, do you mind? Because she too didn't, she's not part of those kind of things. Looking through the questions and probably just solve it. I said I would never. It's better I failed out subject than do expo. This girl cried. It was that moment I made a resolve that post-secondary school, I'm going to keep her. Do you understand? After the whole thing, I said, see, if I fail this exam, it's fine. Don't worry, I'll, I will find a way to reset the, rewrite those things. The next morning, when I went into exam hall, I saw tough questions. The only thing that was playing in my head was what she was saying yesterday. Well, I almost regretted, I, I should have asked her, have you seen the question? Let's see if I can look at it. But I still did what I, I can do. I think in that maths, I had either a C6, oh. no matter, no regardless of the difficulty. Yes. Yes. So I didn't even feel, so yeah, so a whole lot of story. After that, so I think she was my only crush in secondary, secondary school. school. I didn't crush on anyone. Um, I didn't even have any serious relationship. The only people I have around me are people who will encourage me to study. If you're not encouraging me to, do, to progress, then I don't need you. So then in secondary school, it was uh, from the hostel to class, back to the hostel, you know, maybe I will rest, then go to read. If there are days I need to go for fellowship in school, from hostel to fellowship or from class to fellowship, 
back to host there, from host there, back to class to study. Those were my routines. And it was beautiful. But hunger, she was shaking. <laughs> so how did you end up with the, the, the girl you were in love with? Man, it was heartbreaking. Mm. Yeah, it was really heartbreaking because at the point when I left, uh, when I left the city, I went back to my village, you know, um, to start thinking about what's the way forward, how do I move forward with my life, you know. I picked up a teaching job, you know, and all of that, you know, uh, before I would further my education. I didn't want to be idle because I know when you are idle, you, your, your brain will just start diminishing and all of that. So I picked up. So once in a while, I would go and visit her. So at the point, I started noticing it's like she felt I'm becoming a burden to her. And then I don't know what it means to be giving your girlfriend something Stephen. or to buy. Yeah, okay. I, do I even have to keep? <laughs> so I probably, I don't understand what it means to really be in a relationship, you know. And I'm talking about, at this point, I think I was either 19 years or mm. 20, you know. So I didn't really understand all of those. So I kept on going, kept on going until I now left the village. I now traveled. I came into Abuja first. Um, applied to go to the university and all of that. So I didn't have the opportunity of visiting her as often as I used to do. Um, and I didn't have a phone at the point too. Do you understand? So communication literally dropped. God. But any time I travel and I go to Benue, the first, if I, before I would go to my parents' house, I would stop to see her face. You know, uh, I really loved her. Um, like I said, after I, I wanted to take the relationship further after secondary school, and um, maybe because of the this, I don't I don't know because she never told me. Um, she started slacking, or maybe she found someone else who was maybe in better position to love her than I do, and all of that. So I just that was I ended. Uh, I tried talking to her, but she started snobbing me. You know, I it was painful because I felt I like this girl. Do you understand? She was like my first person I could develop feeling for. And um, the feelings have to die. You understand? Uh, if, you, if you keep loving someone and they don't give it back to you, it's like trying to push a mountain that is bigger than you. You will end up injuring yourself. Mm. So why not relax and then find a path that you can go and grow? Wow. So those periods that you're going to a house like, that you don't know how to buy things for her, that period, was she cooking for you and eating the food? No, no, no. She was, she was staying with her parents. So was it wasn't really about what I would eat. It wasn't really about what she was doing for me. It was just the fact that I liked her. I just want to see her. Just, you know, when you like someone, you want yeah, to be with the person. person. So I felt every opportunity I had to be with her was a big one for me. We, 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 we really hanged out, you know, because now person we get money, now they hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a, a popular saying that we are outside. Now people don't share to outside again. We are inside. We are inside if you are outside, you know what it means. So <laughs> I, I, I really had that resources. So I just go there, see her. After a while, I go back home. So that was just it. We just talked. So I probably feel we lost the center of uh, attraction or what really holds us together. It wasn't properly defined. If it was defined, maybe we would have still been here. But I'm glad uh, it didn't happen because maybe God has a way of trying yes, to make things happen. Yes, yes. You know, then it was painful, but I really had to move on. That was where the other of her friend that I said was started emphasizing, guy, you need to move on. That one is my friend as well. She's like, you need to move on but because she knows how much I really cared about her. Mm. So that, that, that period of heartbreak, that means you didn't eat food. You, you no, how will I? Omo, you still have to eat too. <laughs> <laughs> See, it is only foolishness that makes someone to say he's heartbroken and cannot eat. You want to die? Ah. You, you, if you die, that person will still love somebody else. So why are you not eating food because the person left you? Is the person not eating food? If you don't eat, will it bring the person back? It's not possible. At all. So eat food, be happy, and move on. Those who value you, will come for you not because of what you have to offer in terms of monetary um, value you know people should be with you because you have value to give to them to improve their life and all of that 
it necessarily don't have to be money. Money is secondary. Yes. If yes. your personality is good enough, they can communicate with you. They can feel safe around you. You know, you help them to find purpose and all of that. I think that for me is the most important thing. Mm. So if someone breaks your heart and you want to kill mm. yourself, life goes on. I know this episode is boom, 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 boom. So, be right back. Welcome back with me in the studio today with Mr. Onachi. So uh, you can't wait to listen to him again. So you have listened to some, just little, just wait, you will hear it again. That person, even if you are still in love with the person and anything negative happens, give that person one month, two months, they move on forward. People have moved on. People die every day and the people that love them have moved on. I have a story of a very close friend of mine who um, when we said he was searching for a job as well as m myself, you know, post NYSC, and then um, I went with him to submit uh, his uh, CV somewhere, and then he traveled. And when he traveled for a wedding, he wanted to see his also maybe like secondary school love and all of that. On his way to the place, he died. Jesus. Yes, he's my bosom friend. He died. In fact, I just threw away his pictures not long ago. His death was the most painful death I ever experienced as a, as a person. When he died, everybody has moved on. The same lady is married with about two children or three already. Hmm. You understand? So live your best life. When people leave you, they only allow you to find opportunity to grow and become better so that the person who will love you will come for you. Hmm. Deep. The person will love you will come for you. They will definitely come. Okay. So, uh, our next question goes this way. Why is ladies, some ladies, not all, some ladies tell guys their story, their personal experience to it than their full ladies? The truth is, whether you want to agree to it or not, ladies have this tendency to be jealous of each other. They may not say it, but sometimes, through their acts, they display it. So ladies feel more secure when they relate with a good man. Not all men. When they have a friend that is a guy that is good, they feel safer. I've had a couple of friends that are girls that would prefer to tell me their deepest secret than to tell a fellow girl. Do you understand? Some men, are they don't control what they say. The same thing with some girls, they just talk anyhow. Do you understand? When anybody confides in you to tell you anything, you owe them a responsibility to keep it to yourself, even to your grave, no matter how bad that thing is. You don't have a responsibility of sharing it with anybody. The reason why they tell you something is not for you to broadcast it. It's because they have trust. When anybody gives you a trust and you betray it, then I don't want to say anything that because we are on camera, you understand. But for people to tell you their secret, they trust you. Don't betray people's trust. So I feel that ladies literally trust some men more than their fellow ladies. With due respect, I've heard um, where a lady is telling her fellow lady about how good the man she's seeing is, and her friend is going behind to see how he can manipulate. manipulate the guy or get the guy out of her. It has happened over time. So girls are becoming wiser. Do you understand? Except they have known the fellow lady in and out and can trust her. It's the same thing with men. There are men that cannot share anything with their fellow men because they don't feel safe because men can be jealous of men as well. When they see that, oh, you are doing something, they cannot tell you, but you see their attitude and all of that. 
you, if you are sensible, you will know who really is your friend. Your friend should be happy with every progress you make and not act funny. So when I tell you this is the thing I'm doing, I don't tell you and look at how um, you react by my... It's every single action that you display when I'm telling you about my success. It will tell me if I should continue or not. As I am, there are things I want to do. You will never hear it. You will never hear it until it is done. In fact, some of my friends will always say that they feel like maybe I'm in the Department of State Security because you can't hear. But the person who I trust will hear it even before any other person. It could be a lady, it could be a male. Uh, yes. Do you understand? I have a wife. I can tell my wife. I said, okay, this is what's up because I know she's my wife. But in this context, it's not about someone wife, who, yes. yeah, do you understand? So, yeah. So, ladies feel more safe when they tell, because sometimes they feel that like, oh, he has nothing to jealous me about. As a matter of fact, what am I going to be jealous about? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, this, um, take us to the next question to, um, what was the worst, uh, worst mistake you ever made? Hmm. I have made a couple of mistakes. Yes, and the first thing to help me move forward after the mistake is to take responsibility for the mistake. Because you can't find a way forward in anything when you keep blaming the mistake. What was the reason for the mistake? What caused it? If it is your responsibility, accept it. That way is your first pathway to finding solution and healing. I made a couple of mistakes that um, I probably won't be able to say it on camera as it were. Yes, yes. But I, the first mistake I made was trusting someone that I feel was worth it. Yes, I was trusting someone that I feel was worth it, that I had to invest money. And I lost the money. And I said a couple of mistakes. So there are a lot of them like that has happened. And I probably didn't learn from the first. The second happened. The third happened. And all of that. So I think those were some of the things um, that has happened to me. I think that I was mistake. That I am able to trust people. Because my kind of person is um, I easily trust people. And uh, one of the things I learned from it is before you trust people, check their potential and their character. Don't just see people and entrust things to them. Watch them over time. If people of character are people that have been tested and proven over time, by the time you have people of that um, you know, experience or whatever, you'll be able to entrust them. But if you don't, you will get beaten, not once, not twice, not thrice. And I think to a large extent, uh, before you make any decision, don't be in a hurry. Because when we want to make decisions, we are too excited about the decision. You, feel, you only look at the end goal. You don't look at the process. You feel that, oh, this thing, I'm going to hammer with it. I want to blow. That blow will blow you. <laughs> the blow will blow you. I'm telling you. <sighs> wow, what experience. So... Tell us, do you believe in love? I believe in love. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Let me, let, there's a song, I believe in love. I, can't, I don't know, I'm not a singer, so I probably won't be able to <laughs> sing like that, you know. Uh, love is a beautiful thing. Even though people abuse it, it shouldn't stop you from loving. Love is God. God is love. Every single thing that we see and experience today is a product of love. There is nothing that exists without love. And guess what? Love is a four-letter word, yeah? Hate is also four-letter words. But do you know that one is stronger than the other? Which is love. And when people begin to act the opposite of love, it becomes hate. Why do people hate? 
when they should love because of some of those little, little things that we talked about that happened. If not, God expects that our hearts should be filled with love. And let me tell you from a Christian perspective, the Bible says that woe unto him who feels that offense will not come. Offenses will always come. But you need to make up your mind to always forgive people, right? And the only way you forgive people is not because of their perfection. It's because of the love that has filled your heart. So I believe in love. I believe that this world will be a better place if we begin to love as Christ loves. Because true love is not selfish. When I say I love you, it shouldn't be by lips. It should be from my heart. I'm meaning that I wouldn't do anything that will hurt you because I love you. When I see that you are going to fall, I should be able to stop you from falling because I love you. But the truth is, there are people you want to give love to that they are not willing to accept it. And what is love? It's not by just giving people things. There are people who are going in a certain path and you say, don't go this path. Too. If you go, you will fall. They'll say, leave me alone. I want to fall. I want to fall. <laughs> hey, let them fall now. She <laughs> fall is also falling that word. Yes, hey, no, fall now. <laughs> so, no, well, like, if I want to give you something I think is good and you don't like it and you want to fall, so it's fine. But try to do what you have to do to express the love that you have because love is the strongest thing that ever exists. Mm, love, strongest thing that ever exists, okay? Mm. So now, our next question goes this way, sir. What is a special life like? Well, I, I, I don't think there is a, 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 um, a prerequisite to measure how someone's spiritual life is or like a thermometer or something that you use to measure someone's spiritual life. So I, I can't say I'm a very spiritual person or I'm a zero spiritual person. One of the things I believe is that I believe in God I believe in the fact that Christ came to die and then he resurrected to give me an eternal life. And every day I'm a work in progress. I am not perfect, but through the workings of Christ, I'm growing on a daily basis to becoming like Christ. I may not be at the point I want to be spiritually, but I know with time, I can attain a certain level of spirituality as I want. But one of the things that I wrote even this morning on my status is that anybody who refuses to pray is proud. So if you really love Christ and you want to grow spiritually, you need to learn to pray because prayer brings you closer to the person that you, you love, which is Christ. Even Christ, that is God, prayed to God. That's true. So... I think I'm a work in progress. <laughs> See, if you don't forgive, you build a heap of problems in your heart. The greatest thing you can do to yourself is to allow your heart to be ventilated. And your heart being ventilated means that you are free of any offense. Offenses will come, deliberately or not. People will offend you. I will also offend people. True. Do you honest, I have offended people. So, one of the things I have always told myself from way back is forgive people. In fact, even if I'm to lose money, I let it go. My peace is better than keeping anybody in my heart. That's true. So, I forgive you and I move on. But the truth is, I can forgive you and I don't have you in my, in my circle. That doesn't mean I hate you. I forgive you, but I create yes, limits yes, to yes. which, yes, so that there's no repeat tomorrow. Nobody is when, when some dog bites you once, you go again, open your leg or put your leg, may it bite you the second time, the third time. Then you are amongst all men, the most foolish. So forgiveness is not just for the person you are forgiving, but for yourself. Because if God must have mercy on you, you must have mercy on someone else. True. 
So to obtain the mercy of God, show mercy also to others who trespass against you. So I believe so much. This, my secondary school crush, I'm forgiving her. I used to see her messages and all of that. So once in a while, we just say, hey, hello, how are you doing? Because she's also married right now. Do you understand? I read my heart of offense. If someone does something I don't like, I find a way to have communication. Because the thing I notice with us is that we are more confrontational than having conversation. Mm. Because mm. you are offended, both of you start confronting yourselves. Do you understand? And I believe that when I offend people too, I should be forgiven. If there's a way you can talk about it, talk about it so that it gets out of your heart. Always allow your heart to be ventilated. Mm. Best in waiting for a place where no allow air enter, and I ain't go choke die. Yeah, blessed they yeah, put my nails for, for. Do you understand? For for, for saw it to. You do you understand? It keep it will keep growing. And yeah. the truth is, the more you allow offenses, the more the devil will give you reasons to keep hating. It will just keep building up. It's like you building a house. So it is better you have a talk, fix it, and close it. Mm. Fix it and close it. Yes, have a talk, have a fix thought. it, and close it. Ah, the Israema, don't cash out. <laughs> have a thought, you fix it. You are making it. me preach ah. on your show. No, 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 no. <laughs> have a thought, fix it, and close it. This Clear. is very big, Rema. You just move on with your life. You will live a happy life. Thank you very much, sir. I know, I know this episode is boom, 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 boom. Well, with, I don't know what you're with saying. Second <laughs> school experience. But I, I, you know, Miss Onaji said something. He said, um, you need to go back to the drawing board, you know, to think of some things that be happening in secondary school. Right. So that we can, you know, we pick, we, we put the next episode coming very soon. I know that it's going to be episode hot part two, episode two of Mr. Onashi alone. Because, I don't understand. Yes, because we will allow him to go back to the drawing board and make sure that he has no. fixed all those things in place for us no, to come back No, are you to saying I have to go back to secondary school and wear school uniform? I and think, then I think, back, I, I think, like, I think what should be the next thing for you to do for us to put on your school uniform, your school bag, when you're talking, so, okay, this is what you, when men were boys, you understand? <laughs> I'm still a boy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not still a boy anymore. With, with your wife, wife bouncing. Wife. When you're talking, do you marry? When you're secondary school, yes, no, I, I, I wasn't. Life, life has happened to me. You, you see, you know, so, you see? so it's, it's level all down to do one or two things for us to do. It's so, okay. So it's, it's, it's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yes, um, thank I'm you so honored much. to be here. Thank you so much. I know this episode has blessed so many people. So please, my viewers, I want you to share this story and this episode. Take it to the nation of the world. I know you're going to bless someone else in over there. So thank you so much for watching this episode with Mr. Onachi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I and thank you for bringing back that nostalgic then, feeling. Yeah, we are going to bring back the uh, memory. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the song said, bring back memory, bring back memory. I didn't know how to sing the song, though. Uh, no, we are the same. We don't know how to sing, so it's okay. Well, we have to be on the camera today. Yeah, yeah, we have to <laughs> so stay behind. So we take us on our way this time around to appear on the screen. Yeah, so maybe I have to be the one to host you on your own show. Ah! Because since you are asking ah! about uh, our <laughs> secondary school See, experience. Even the time my secondary experience is something that... Nobody wants to hear the experience. Why wouldn't nobody hear? Hear the experience. 